Hey everyone, I just have some catching up to do with you guys and a few little things to share. Um, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is talk about a dream, a couple of dreams I had and then something that actually happened to me I felt like was some direct intervention, some divine intervention. Um, the first dream I had, this was back in, on January 16th, uh, 2016. Um, I was, it was kind of a short dream. I was in a bus and I felt, I, it, I looked out the window, I was with other, just a few other people on this bus and these huge creatures were attacking the bus. They almost looked like pterodactyls. They were these huge bird-like creatures. And as they were circling around the bus, suddenly they opened their mouths and it looked like all these little bugs started coming out of their mouths, like these gnats. And the bugs were swirling around the, the bus and I really quickly said, make sure all the air conditioner vents are closed so these bugs can't get in through the vents. And in my mind, I thought they were all closed, like I had a memory of closing them all. But when I then looked at them, I saw one looked like it was closed, but it wasn't. And I really quickly ran over and I closed a few of them um, and no bugs got in. And that was pretty much the dream. So what I think that represents, a lot of us feel like buses or vehicles represent the rapture, like we're all gathering and getting ready to take a vehicle out of here um, or be taken away on this, on this trip, this journey. And I think those bugs, just because I think just historically these kind of pests, these things that aggravate us, this is sin. And sometimes we are really quick to recognize the real big sin, but that can also, but then it's, these little sins also can be swirling around us. What I think was significant is I, in the dream, had felt like everything was closed, like they, they couldn't get in, but then something took me by surprise. It could just be a personal thing where I feel like, you know, I'm living a really good life, everything I've got, you know, I'm, I'm abiding in Christ, um, but, but you know, that devil is crafty and he may find really subtle ways that we think we're safe. We think we've done what we need to do, but we need to keep looking carefully. We need to be very vigilant. And in the dream, I spotted the vent and nothing got in. So I think it's a timely thing to say, okay, let's stay, keep our eyes open, uh, have eyes to see, ears to hear, and be vigilant. Okay, um, my next dream, which kind of goes into this thing that happened to me, um, this was just this last Friday. And I remember why, because it was um, a morning, I have a younger daughter who's almost three. She's, she's three, oh, about to be three. And she has Soto syndrome. So she goes to three different therapists every week. She sees occupational, physical therapist, speech therapist every single week. So that Friday morning, um, we were rushing off to get to one of her appointments. And it was a, a nine o'clock appointment, I remember, because... We were, we were trying to get there in time, and I usually give myself at least 30 minutes to get there. We're in the country, and we go through some winding roads to get into the city. So um, I know one of my things I need to work on is getting impatient. And when I have to be somewhere, and I've got little kids to round up and get dressed and fed and prepared and packed up certain things to take with us, um, you know, I get a little flustered. I have to grab this, that, and I get really frustrated when I'm trying to pack them in the car and running late. And I just get really exasperated with myself. Like, oh, I can't, I get there on time. So this was one of those mornings. And I actually thought I was going to be doing okay. Um, my older daughter was going off with my husband to stay with him at his work for a little while while I took my younger daughter to her appointment. So it was just me and Skylar, my little one. And I'm as I'm ready to get her going, I realized the TV was on in our family room. And usually by then it's shut off. We just kind of watch a little news in the morning and shut it off. So I'm running around the family room, cleaning up, looking for the remote control. And the room wasn't really that messy, surprisingly, that morning. <laughs> but I, as I'm looking for it, I'm straightening the room. I'm arranging, we have a big sectional couch. It's like a big L-shaped couch and throw pillows. And I'm, I'm arranging the pillows, shaking out some throw blankets, folding things up, putting away toys, looking for this remote while I'm cleaning up. And I can't find it. And then Skylar's yelling for me. So I run into the other room, get her dressed, go to the bathroom and uh, pull out the diaper bag and all that stuff. Run back out, look for that remote again. I still can't find it. This time I'm, I get on my knees and look under the couch. I still can't find it. I'm thinking, where can it be? I've never lost it so completely before. Usually we find it under something. Um, so then I run back into the kitchen, grab more things, get my purse together, get Skylar's shoes on, get her coats on one more time. And what's really driving me crazy is I can't shut this TV off because 
we have since updated our TV and my husband brought this new TV. It's one of these like really sleek looking things. I couldn't find the power button to turn this thing off. And it was making me crazy because I hate the sound of this TV going, right? So I finally find, we have a universal remote with a satellite and that's the one I was looking for because it does everything. I finally find the original remote that goes with the TV. I'm like, oh, here it is. I grab that remote. It was on the mantle. I turn it off and put it back on the mantle. Okay, that was a different remote than the one I was looking for, but I finally turned the thing off. So we run out the door, we get to our appointment and I had hoped to give myself 30 minutes to get there. We got there, um, we left like 10 minutes late and we got there with one minute to spare. And as I'm driving, I'm like, you know, praying that we get there in time. As I'm going down the driveway, it is so foggy. I can't even see maybe 50 feet in front of me. It was one of those really, really foggy mornings. We get here in Wisconsin. We live, we have a lot of farm fields in front of us and that fog comes in and it just sits there and it will be there the whole day. I mean, it's that kind of fog. It just doesn't leave. And this morning was extra, extra thick. And, um, some people don't put their headlights on, you know, feeling it reflects back. But here, sometimes you do have to do it where we live because otherwise you just can't see anybody. So um, as I'm driving, like I usually do, I'm a little bit like frazzled. I'm trying to get my gloves on as I'm steering the, <laughs> the steering wheel and I'm going around some twists and turns. And um, halfway through, I'm like, oh, I got to get my turn my lights on because I can see cars coming with me with their headlights on. So I know they, so I turn my lights on so they can see me. Anyway, we get there uneventful, no worries. We get to the appointment. On the way home, I pick up my other daughter from my husband's work and we're heading home. And I asked my older daughter, Addison, where could that remote be? Because it's still bugging me. And I said, you know what? I bet I left it in your bedroom when I went up to your room to help you find some clothes this morning. And so when we got home, I asked her to go up to her room to go look and see if I left it on her dresser. So she's up there looking for that remote. And I'm in the kitchen with Skylar giving her a snack. And she comes down saying, mommy, it's not in there. I'm like, are you sure? Now it's really bugging me. Where can it be? So um, I get Skylar out of her high chair and everything, and I'm walking into the family room, and my heart just stops because there, right on the couch, is the remote I was looking for. It's just sitting there perfectly. <laughs> now I know, I know it was not there when I left. I was the last person to leave that house and the first person back. My husband had not, he'd been at his job all day. He had left before I did, um, but it was so, it almost frightened me because my first thought was who's been here because that was not here. And it, and the logic of an, a prowler coming in to find my remote, that just made no sense. But I so was positive that that was not where I, that it was just wasn't there because I literally three times stood and looked from one end of the couch to the other looking picking things up, shaking things out, looking, and I had straightened all the cushions, every cushion, and here it was sitting right on top. And I had left, come back and left that room three times, and each time it was not there. Yet when I came back after this appointment, it's the first thing I saw in that room was sitting right there. So I'm, my mind is racing going, what's going on? I, I couldn't understand and make sense of this. So I'm trying to think was this an interval like did the angel come and maybe take well, what would be the purpose of that and the only thing i can think of was it made me extra late it was one extra thing i had to try to do as i'm rushing out the door and i thought about it and it took about maybe all combined maybe 10 minutes of my time going back and forth trying to find this thing getting on my hands and knees looking under the couch and so i thought maybe it delayed me it was a super super foggy morning um, and I didn't put my headlights on until halfway through the trip and these cars that had been passing me, you know, maybe somebody who wouldn't have seen me early on, well, it allowed them to have passed by without me, you know, hitting them or them hitting me or being out in the country. We, there's lots of hills and there is lots of steep, steep drop-offs. And if I had turned a corner, maybe trying to put my glove on or one of the, you know, harebrained things I'm trying to do while I'm driving, um, I could have gone off the side. I was thinking about that today when I was driving down that same road going, oh my gosh, there's so many steep drop-offs around here. Um, all I know is it delayed me and that remote was not there when I left. It, it's so, I mean, for days that, that really like affected me because I was so, so positive. Um, so I, I can't explain it. And the only thing when I prayed on this was um, I just felt this 
the Holy Spirit telling me that um, in my last video, I had talked about angels and really proclaiming people to take comfort in their protection. And I felt the spirit telling me, we blessed you because of that. We are where it may have been a subtle thing in the past for angelic intervention, which we have all the time and we just don't know it. This didn't have to be quite so subtle. They wanted me to know that they were there and they delayed us and they protected us. Um, so, um, and I thought what was significant, I remembered a dream I had had the night before of some kind of big, I thought it was a car explosion. All I know is in the dream, it was very fast, but there was like a truck or a van or something. And I drive a minivan, could have been my van, I don't know. But all of a sudden this van was just like this big, like all of a sudden glass just went poof, like some either, an, I thought it may be an explosion, but maybe it could have been an impact. And in the dream, all this glass was just flying at my face. I, and I remember I couldn't move, I could get away. I was just like stuck where I was. So I don't know if that dream tied into a possible something that could have happened that I was protected from. I've never dreamt of a car crash before, and it was just really unusual that I should happen to dream that just before when I think this was a delay from a possible accident. Um, okay, so I just wanted to share that, and guys, take comfort that um, this was kind of um, punctuating that last video of, yes, the angels are around us, they're constantly protecting us. And I'm honestly thinking that they're not... <laughs> The rules of concealment are kind of being lifted in these end times, especially for those of us in his church about to make our home with Jesus. Um, these angels are, you know, around us and they know that their children know that they're there. So um, I kind of felt like this was a, a blessing that they left it right there for me to know that they are the ones who put it there. In fact, it was placed in a way that I don't usually place it. I usually put it um, face down with the buttons facing down so our little one doesn't want to try to hit the buttons this was face up so I know I don't usually leave the remote like that um so just something like that it was just it was just too too obvious there's no way I would I would have missed it if it had been left like that okay and then um another dream I had uh unrelated to the others was I've had a few dreams in the last few I guess maybe a month two months of being pregnant maybe just two or three dreams of being pregnant and it would be kind of like I'm in the middle of a dream and all of a sudden, oh, I'm pregnant. Like I just happened to notice I was pregnant and I was really showing. Well, um, two nights ago, I just dreamt that I was getting on a plane and there were people among the airplane just kind of talking and a politician walks by. He's a politician who's currently running for president. And it's somebody who I personally don't really care for. Um, I don't feel like he's... Um, the kind of Christian that I think should be leading this country. Um, and quite honestly, I'm not getting too hung up in the in the political race right now because my personal opinion is we're going to be out of here before anybody comes. If anybody is elected for another president uh, to be a president, um, I know there's a lot of conspiracies and theories that perhaps Obama is not planning on leaving. I don't know. Hopefully we'll be gone after that So uh, or before that. So anyway, in this dream, the politician walks by and... Um, I was talking to him and only thing I can remember about our conversation was I mentioned the word New Zealand and I mentioned the name of a woman named Heather and something to do with, oh, I told him, oh, I know Heather or something like, oh, somebody's name is Heather. And I said, and this would help with New Zealand. And, and I don't understand what it was, but he was just like, oh, okay. Like, and he was listening to me like, okay. And then he walked away. And so then um, I realized I'm pregnant <laughs> again. It's like, oh, here I'm pregnant. And um, I suddenly realized that I'm feeling a pain, like I'm about to have this baby. And I got really, really scared because I'm an, on an airplane. You're not supposed to have babies on an airplane. And I, I'm racing around looking for somebody to help me because I, I, I'm scared. I feel like something's wrong. I don't think I'm supposed to be having this baby so fast, so, so quickly. Um, and I, I'm, I'm running around and I'm, I stopped one person and they couldn't help me. And so then I come over and these two people are in a, an airplane seat and I said, I need your help. I need your help. And so I start to deliver the baby and they're like, oh, you're fine. This baby is fine. Don't worry. And I look and I see the baby and I pick up the baby. And, and well, I think it was fully delivered. I can't remember. I just remember seeing the head <laughs> and lifting it up. And then I woke up. Um, and as soon as I realized the baby was okay, I, I remember actually feeling intense, like physical pain, like delivering a baby. But then as soon as I realized this baby was okay, it's like the pain just kind of went away. It was just a really strange experience, very vivid, 
Um, and I've never, I mean, I haven't had a dream like that in many years. Um, I don't plan on having more kids. I'm 45. I think those days are past. Um, the last time I had a dream like that is when we were praying for another child and when we were blessed with have a second one. Um, but anyway, but that those days are gone. So I don't think it's something like that, but I, I have had some other sisters and brothers tell me that that means that, um, something that you're anticipating is finally going to happen. And I mean, what more could we be anticipating than the thing that's on my mind all the time, which is Jesus and, um, him coming to come and collect his church. So, okay. So, um, there's that dream. And then the only other things I wanted to quickly mention is in follow up to my, was it my last video? Maybe the one before last. Um, there was the one about the chariot. And I think I got some more detail from, from Jesus about the meaning of why I heard in a chariot up to heaven, because I had been praying about my family and I had been praying about, you know, not just my children, which I know are going to go home to the Lord when his time comes, when he's come to come get us. But I worry about my husband and myself. I mean, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm living in Christ. I don't know if my husband and I are fully on the same page yet, but my prayer to Jesus has been, please, when you come to collect us, can we be together as a family? I mean, I don't know how it's going to work, but I just had been praying that, can we just be together as a family, just to know in my heart that all of us are going to be okay. And then not long after I heard in a chariot up to heaven. And what I've come to find out is I think angels collect us if we're individual, like individual people, but chariots come to collect a family. So I finally realized the spirit was telling me, Holy Spirit was, we're sending a chariot for you, which means your family's going to be okay. Oh. So that just really, really put peace on my heart. And I think that's why that particular thing was told to me when um, I hadn't, that was just so out of the, you know, uh, you know, something that I had out of the blue, I hadn't ever really thought of chariots before, but that was a, a beautiful blessing that was told to me. So and then one last thing, um, my video, two videos ago, I think where I was talked about the explosion, um, and then seven days and the rapture. And I know there's been a lot of people talking about really concerned about me setting a date or something or time. And guys, you know, I am just showing you and telling you what has been told me. I'm not here to interpret. I'm just, it's my job to share. I prayed, I tested this. I asked Jesus about it in my heart. I don't feel like a date or time was given. I think he was just, the Lord was telling me that um, we are going to know as things start to unfold that this is it. Because if you had watched my last video, it was like he gave me saying, it's going to, this will happen and then this will happen and then boom, it happened and then the, and this happened. It kind of went boom, boom, boom. I was getting knowledge as it was unfolding. Um, but if you question things, if you know, you're really unsure, then pray on it. Pray on it. Let's see what the Lord tells you. Don't take my word for it. Go and, and, and pray on this and see what he reveals to you. And we know the Lord speaks, especially our father, God, our father, he speaks in symbols. And I think because symbols, words speak to our head, but symbols and symbolism speaks to our heart. That's why Jesus taught in parables, because understanding things as a story and symbols, it speaks to our heart. Our rational mind doesn't get in the way and pick it apart. Um, so see what, if that, if you want to take it just purely by symbolism, the number seven means perfection and it's a God's perfect number. So it could just mean this is going to happen in God's perfect time. Um, so take, interpret it as you would. Um, but anyway, that's pretty much what I had to share. Try to get you guys up to speed with what's been going on in my life. And, um, I pray over this video, let it bless each and every person who watches this and let it speak to them in the ways it needs to be spoken to, um, to them and just Lord Jesus continue to protect us and, and cover us with your protection and Lord Jesus, just continue to speak, let us hear your voice and feel your guidance clearly in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you guys.